So, good morning to everybody. Today, we will discuss the anatomy of leaf, that is dicot and both dicot as well as monocot leaf. Here, in case of the Oh, Guru. Oh, Samurai. Feel bad. 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 Feel So, already we have discussed the morphology of leaf. The morphology of leaf means that is the, the definition of leaf is leaf is a lateral dissimilar appendage developed at the on the stem at the nodal region. Lateral dissimilar is growth, always the leaf will be growing always to the stem in a lateral manner. So here in case of the leaf, leaf is a most important part of the plant. Why? Because it performs various functions. Most important physiological functions will be performed by the leaf only. The, so that is the leaf plays a very very important role in the plant. The reason is, see here, the leaf the, that we will discuss the details in the physiology. So the, the anatomically we will be studying the, its anatomy, its, its internal structure. What is leaf that I already explained. And then the leaf performs, that is the important function is photosynthesis. The second one very important that is the food will be prepared by the Leaf only, so the leaf in, in your high school you might have studied that leaf is the kitchen of plant. So where the food is prepared, the next one is because of photosynthesis we are alive in the, on this planet. Next one is the respiration because exchange of gases will be taking place. That is we call them as exchange of gases because for the photosynthesis it takes CO2 and for after the for the respiration. It will live and it takes oxygen also, it liberates oxygen after the photosynthesis, liberate oxygen, and that oxygen will be fixed again, it will be liberated into the atmosphere. So we call them as exchange of gases. And also the one more important function, which is called as the transpiration. The transpiration that we study in the picture, all these factors, the physiological three important factors: the photosynthesis, the respiration, and transpiration. All three, three important physiological functions will be taking place by leaf form. So the leaf plays a very important role in the plants. So now we'll study the anatomy of leaf. So in case of the anatomy of leaf, if you take a transfer section of the leaf, what are the internal structures? So there are two types of leaf we find. The one is called dicot leaf. The second one is called monocot leaf. So morphologically, so in the dicot leaf we find the reticulate venation that already we have discussed you, the reticulate venation in the lamina, so if that is due to the reticulation we call them as it is a dicot. And in case of the monocot it, gives the, it has the parallel venation, the parallel venation will be developed. So but anatomically this leaf we call them as differently in the anatomically. So this leaf, the dicot leaf is also called as Darcy ventral leaf. And the monocot leaf is called isobilateral leaf. And also this leaf the dorsimental leaf and also it is called as bifacial leaf. That is anatomical leaf and it is called unifacial leaf. So morphologically we call them as dicot leaf and monocot leaf. Anatomically this leaf is called as dorsimental leaf. Or C. 
dorsi ventral veins and and also it is called bifacial why it is called as dorsi ventral leaf and bifacial leaf there is another way because the dorsal surface and ventral surface of the leaf will be it is a dorsi ventral leaf complex one and it is a flat structure leaf so the dorsal surface and ventral surface will be different anatomically they are different and their morphologically they are different so the dorsal side of the leaf we find very dark in color whereas the ventral side of the leaf we call them will be little as compared to the dorsal and ventral that is the dorsal will be having more dark green in color as the ventral will be little less as compared to both both why because it is due to the unequal distribution of the chloroplast and the unequal distribution of the chloroplast the chloroplast the presence of the chloroplast will be because of the presence of the chloroplast it can prepare the food so there is the unequal distribution of the chloroplast see here in the dorsal surface there will be more amount of chloroplast in the dorsal cells in the upper layer upper region and in the ventral surface lower it will have very less distribution of chloroplast as compared to the dorsal so due to the so it appears dark green in color in the upper surface whereas the in, in case of the ventral surface it will be light it will be less green right it will be green but it will be less this is due to an equal distribution so for that reason it is called dorsi ventral when we observe in anatomically the dorsal cells will be different and the ventral cells will be different so in the dorsal surface the cells will be different and so the tissue will be different in the ventral surface in the ventral to lower surface again the tissue will be different for that reason it is called dorsi ventral and also it is called bifacial by means having two faces means the upper face upper left surface that is the dorsal upper surface will be more darker and the lower will be less darker so that is both the surface will be different so it is called bifacial bifacial in case of the now coming to the monocot leaf it is having a parallel variation it is isobilateral leaf iso means both the surfaces the upper as well as the lower or dorsal as well as the ventral both will be similar both will be similar so it is called as isobilateral it is due to the equal distribution and also usually it will be developed and the leaf usually it will be a why it will develop laterally because to expose to the sunlight so in the in the dry crop it will be the dorsal surface will be totally exposed to the sunlight for photosynthesis totally whereas the ventral surface if they will grow in immediately just vertically or little later why because both the surface will get the equal equal sunlight and also the 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 inner cells the chloroplast will be equally distributed on both the ventral and dorsal surface upper and lower surface. so for that reason it is called as isobilateral leaf isobilateral leaf or unifacial leaf uni means uni means similar similar face having both the faces are similar so for that reason it is called uniface now we will study the anatomy of these two leaves first we will study the dicot leaves just i will draw the figure Thank you. 
So it is the now coming to the anatomy of dicot leaf. So if you take the transfer section of the dicot leaf, so you find the there will be three different zones we can say part. The first one is epidermis. The second one is mesophyll. The third one is vesicular one. So these are the three important parts. So the epidermis, this epidermis includes two, that is upper as well as lower. And this mesophyll includes the palisade parenchyma, palisade parenchyma and spongy parenchyma. Pelicide and pongy tissue, parenchyma. So the vesicular bundle includes the bundle sheath. It includes bundle sheath. Then xylem and lobe. Now I will be explaining all these three one by one. So it is called as the dorsi ventral leaf. Why? Because the dorsal surface is the, the, the anatomy also it is different. So it means the first one is epidermis. The epidermis includes the upper and the lower epidermis. In case of the upper epidermis, that is here the barrel shaped cells, the rectangular cells. 
both the epidermal cells epidermis are similar but here the epidermis will have a layer that is called as cutin layer a cutin the cuticle is present on the epidermis both in upper and as well as the lower cortical but in the upper epidermis the cuticle is very thick and it will be transparent and also which encloses the entire epidermis and it is a protective layer cutin in the form of a layer we call them as cuticle so here this cuticle which protects the sun from the high sun light and also protects from the transpiration of this one there is the transpiration from the leaf water transpiration from the leaf so this cuticle plays a very very important and also it will protect from the entry of the pathogens and on the the next will be the cuticle then we will have the upper epidermis the upper epidermis all the cells is single layer one as compared to an upper and the lower same single layer one all the cells are rectangular or barrel shaped one and these cells some of the cells when the leaf is very young they will have a small outgrowth they are called as epidermal hair these epidermal hair plays a very important role when the when the leaf is very young means it keeps the leaf very moist and also this leaf this epidermal hair will help not to settle anything on the lamina on the leaf lamina on the upper epidermis so epidermal hair plays, plays a very very important role as the leaf becomes old these epidermal hair will degenerate they, they dries up and degenerates so it is the next the epidermis is a protective layer which protects the upper epidermis upper region of the leaf upper region as well as in the lower epidermis here also the lower epidermis the upper epidermis is a continuous one and in when in, in some cases little small openings will be there they are called as stomata in case of the ichod not in all the species only in few species you may get stomata also when the leaf is very young especially in case of the herbs whereas in case of the in all the dicots the upper the lower epidermis is also having a thin layer of cuticle and little epidermal hair if it is when it is young and then the epidermis is not continuous all the cells here also rectangular in shape but some gaps are there they are called as stomata these stomata there is the opening the stomata are developed by are having two guard cells they are having two guard cells they are called as these are the two guard cells these two guard cells which guard the stoma this is the stoma stoma means is the opening so these stoma will be guarded by two bean shaped cells they are or any kidney shaped cells they are called as guard cells these guard cells they guard the opening and they help in the transpiration of water the guard cells especially the guard the stoma and uh, through which the stomata important one is in case of the dicot it will be the guard cells are in the form of bean shaped one and in case of the monocot they are dumbbell shaped one and moreover these guard cells they are having the chloroplast except the epidermal cell except the epidermal cell doesn't have the chloroplast only in the guard cells you find little little amount of chloroplast and also through which the transpiration takes place the exchange of gases will take place in the lower epidermis usually the lower the so for that reason is the the stomatas are restricted to the low, lower epidermis so it is called as hypostomatic hypostatic hypo hypostomatic it is called hypostomatic h y p o s t o m a t i c hypostomatic means it is restricted to the lower epidermis so it is called as hypostomatic usually it will be asked in the you are need to see hypostomatic leaf means it is the dicot leaf only and moreover now coming to the mesophyll so this is about the mesophyll so when we say it is a true leaf means the leaf should have the mesophyll if the leaf is having the mesophyll then only we consider that one as it is a true leaf here the mesophyll is different mesophyll is different means the towards the upper epidermis you find the 
a long elongated cell it is composed the mesophyll is composed of two types of cells one is the pellicel parenchyma the other one will be the spongy parenchyma so the pellicel parenchyma they are having a long columnar cells columnar cells they are arranged about three to four layer they are arranged very compactly and they are that is the long columnar columnar cells we call them as columnar cells which are compactly arranged one above the other and it will be about three to four layers in them in the in that and they are compactly arranged these two these palisade parent time it is a living tissue it is having chloroplast two third of that is about 75 percent of the cell will contains the chloroplast remaining 25 percent will have the cytoplasm and other cell organelles so two third of the cells we have the chloroplast because of the palisade parent chloroplast we can prepare the food so it is exposed to the sunlight palisade parent and next will be the spongy parenchyma. Here, towards the lower epidermis, when we see they are the round, spherical, or oval shaped cells, they are arranged loosely with leaving small spaces, they are called as air spaces or air cavities. And they are loosely arranged. And these pellicide parenchyma is, a, is responsible for photosynthesis, whereas spongy parenchyma is responsible. It performs the function of the three. One is the most important one will be the, the transpiration. The accumulated water will be remained in the and next one is the exchange of gases. The third one is little photosynthesis. So it performs all the three functions, which will be helpful between the two spaces, between the air space with the air will be in the air cavity, the, the excess of water will be retained, and that will be helpful in the transpiration. That will be transpire in the form of vapor that we will discuss in the physiology. physiology. Now coming to the vascular bundles. So this is about the mesophyll. Now coming to the vascular bundle, in case of you know, coming to the vascular bundle, here the especially the vascular bundles are distributed along with the leaf lamina. So the size of the vascular bundle remains on the veins and the veinlets. The veinlets and the veins will have little vascular bundle, smaller size of vascular bundles. Because the way the water will be conducted and food will be translocated through veins in the veinlet from the midrib. In the midrib, we will have more amount of vascular bundles in the midrib. In the midrib. And also here, the larger vascular bundle, especially in, it is composed of xylem and phloem. Usually there is no cambium. If the cambium is also present, because it is a dicot, it is functionless. In few species, the cambium will be there, hardly one layer, but it is functionless. So, the xylem which will be in dark in condition, which will be facing towards the, and moreover, this xylem which will be having all the four components, that is, tracheids, vessels, xylem parenchyma and xylem fiber, and this xylem perform the conduction of water and the minerals, and this xylem supplies the water to the mesophyll, this is the parenchyma for the photosynthesis. For photo at the towards the lower epidermis, so that will be facing towards the upper epidermis. Whereas towards the lower epidermis, you will find the phloem. The phloem is also it is the responsible for translocation of the food material, the food which is prepared from the leaf that will be sent through the phloem. So it helps for the translocation of the food material. And the phloem is also composed of all the four components that is phloem, that is the suit tube, companion cells, phloem parent, and phloem. So, the entire these vascular tissue will be enclosed by a special tissue which we call them as bundle sheet, which is parenchymatous in nature. It's bundle sheet. And in, same, in case of the older vascular bundles, and the, the or in case of the larger vascular bundles, you will find the bundle sheet extension. And which bundle, this bundle sheet extension, which gives the mechanical strength to the vascular bundles, not only to the lamina during the air current, so the vascular bundle will be, will be intact. And these actually will be composed of cholangioma. The bundles in it is having all the cells of the cholangioma, they are very much compactly arranged towards the upper as well as the lower epidermis. Whereas the smaller veins, which they have the vascular bundle and these vascular tissue, but they don't have any vascular tissues. And they don't have any vascular tissues. Sorry, vascular, vascular, sorry, the bundle sheet extensions. So, this is about the anatomy of dicot leaf. Now, coming to the, so here, the most important one is 
Now we'll start. We'll go. We'll go for the monopod leaf. Monopod leaf. The anatomy of monopod. Or shall we go for in the next class? I will explain you the anatomy of monopod leaf. Now here there is the three important the epidermis, which includes cuticle, upper epidermis, and lower epidermis. At the lower epidermis, you will find the stomata. At the upper epidermis, you will find the epidermis. In the both the cases, you will find the epidermal layers and which is the. The next one is the mesophyll. The, for this reason, the mesophyll is having two types of, two different types of tissues. So it is called pericytic parenchyma as well as spongy parenchyma. And this pericytic parenchyma is very is responsible for the photosynthesis because about 75% of the cell, it is they are the columnar cells compact here in the three to four layer. And they are responsible for photosynthesis. Whereas the spongy parenchyma, where to, if they will be restricted towards a lower epidermis, and they are loosely arranged. Usually they will be spherical or oval shape. And these cells are loosely arranged from end to end. And moreover, in between the cell, in between the cells, you will find the air spaces. With this spongy parenchyma it is having a little amount of chloroplast also. It is having chloro. It is a chloroplast. This is nothing but it is the chlorenchyma. We can say it is chlorenchyma. That is because of the chloroplast. And moreover, this is the these are the chloroplast. It is having the less amount of chloroplast. It is having less amount of chloroplast because and it performs the three functions. One is the transpiration. Help it will be involved in the transpiration. Three physiological functions. The second one will be the exchange of gases. The third one will be the little amount of water. The lower pericytic parenchyma. And now coming to the and towards the lower epidermis, you will find the stomata through which the exchange of gases will take place and the transpiration. Next, you will have the vestibular bundle. The vestibular bundle, the xylem and the phloem. That is the xylem. Here, the conjoint collateral close type of vestibular bundle. And usually, it will be endark in condition. And moreover. The xylem is conduction of water in the minerals. The phloem is responsible for transformation of the food material. And also here, the entire vesicular bundle is having a bundle sheet. Parenchymatous bundle sheet will be, which is a single layer one. And in the older vesicular bundles, in the older veins or the larger veins will have bundle sheet extension, which is of composed of polenchyma, which gives the mechanical strength to the leaf lamina as well as from the air current for the movement because the cholenchyma is a, elastic, is a living elastic mechanical tissue because the cholenchyma gives the elasticity to the leaf, elasticity. So, and this will be the, these are the, about the cholenchyma, about the TS of dicotyl. Yes, this finishes the anatomy of dicotyl. Now we'll go for the, next one will be the anatomy of the monocotyl.
ियल and moreover here the upper and the lower epidermal cells so here also it will be having three group the first one is epidermis next one will be the mesophyll the then will be the vascular membrane vascular membrane so in case of the monocot especially the upper epidermis is not continuous whereas in the lower epidermis also not continuous it's a all the cells they are rectangular in shape but they are arranged in it and having a small space they are called as stomata and these stomatas are restricted but in case of the uh, dicot leaf it is restricted usually it will restricted in the lower but here both the epidermis upper and lower epidermis will have the stomata and both have the, here the stomata is guarded by two guard cells they are dumbbell shaped guard cells we call them as dumbbell shaped dumbbell shaped that will discuss guard cells These double shaped guard cells. So the stomata they will have the and this the the function of the stomata will be same. That is exchange of gases, transpiration as and and moreover it will be especially helpful for the transpiration and exchange of gases. And more and and then next will be the especially in the motor cells. That is the here in the upper dermis you will find small larger cells. About two to three cells or three four cells they are larger in size. So they are restricted to upper epidermis. They are called as motor cells or bulliform cells. These cells are upper epidermal cells are modified into large cells, and these cells they help in the folding of leaves. When the leaf is very young in the monocot, and it will be these cells they help for the folding, rolling of leaf. Because of the exosmosis, because the water will be liberated, and then they become shrinken and they close it. And when the water will be again, they, when the water will be absorbed. And they become turgid, means they will become expanded, and then the entire lamina will be get expanded. And moreover, here the cuticle is present from upper and the lower epidermis, but the cuticle will be of similar, and and the cuticle is nothing but is a layer, protective layer. The epidermis is also protective layer. The cuticle layer is also protecting from the high illumination of sunlight and also from the entry of pathogens. Right. Now coming to the It, the, now coming to the mesophyll, that is the next will be the mesophyll, and here the mesophyll will be having only one type of cells, simple parenchyma cells. They are arranged loosely, and they are all the cells they are having the chloroplast type. It is chloroplast. So for that reason, it is called as isobilateral. It is similar. The, the mesophyll is similar, and also it is having a particular chloroplast that is called as C3 chloroplast. That I will explain you. The, C3 chloroplast will be a normal chloroplast, and next will be the, this mesophyll perform the function of photosynthesis. And now coming to the now coming to the vascular bundle, the number of vascular bundle depends of the size of vascular depends upon the veins in the vein layer. The larger veins will have larger, bigger vascular bundle. The smaller veins vein layer will have smaller vascular. Bundle. And moreover, here the vascular bundle is having a simple structure which is composed of a single layer that is called as bundle sheet. 
This bundle sheet is having the chloroplast. It is called C4 chloroplast. So for that reason, there are two types of chloroplast we find. That is called dimorphic chloroplast. That is called as trans anatomy. Trans anatomy. It is trans anatomy because of the two types of chloroplast. This C3 and C4 cycle we will discuss in the physiology, photosynthesis. So there are two types of chloroplast. One will be C3 chloroplast, the other will be the C4 chloroplast, which is restricted into the bundle sheet. Now, Vesca bundles are Y shaped one, so it is endorphine condition. There is no cambium. The, the beta xylem, the two beta xylem, and the proto xylem will be in between them. And then you will have the lysogenous cavity, same as that of the monocot stem. And moreover, the metal xylem is having the, and this xylem is respond, and is having all the four components, tracheal vessels, and xylem parenchyma, xylem parenchyma responsible for conduction of water, which will be restricted to the upper region, upper epidermis, both in case of dicot as well as the monocot. And in case of the phloem also, which is responsible, which will be towards the lower epidermis, and this will be responsible for translocation of food material. This is responsible for translocation of food. It is having all the four components. That is the uh, CO2 companion cell, CO, that is the phloem parenchyma and phloem parenchyma. And in case of the larger vessels, sorry, larger vesca bundle veins, you find the bundle sheet extension, which is composed of sparenchyma, which is composed of sparenchyma. So this finishes the anatomy of dicot and monocot leaf. Yes, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.